Hello, Halifax. This is Claire with Local Tasting Tours. Today we are at Wild Leek Food and Juice Bar on Windsor Street. And I'm sitting in the light of a lovely afternoon with Kirsten Taggart, who is the owner and chef here at Wild Leek, and Shannon Parker from the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. She's the curator of collections at the Art Gallery. And we have a beautiful looking meal in front of us. We have a seitan banh mi and a little salad with curls of beet and carrot and this this incredible looking dill dressing which I hear Wild Lake is famous for. And we also have this juice and it's called the Energizer. Apples and carrots and ginger. That sounds very energizing to me. <laughs> and so seitan is a is a wheat gluten sort of uh, fake meat, right? So how do you make that? Um, the process to make the seitan is you have two bowls. Uh, one's filled with gluten flour, spices, nutritional yeast, and the other one is with cold water, olive oil, soy sauce, chopped onion. Pour the cold into the dry, mix it with a wooden spoon. Eventually you get it, this bread-like mixture that you place into cheesecloth, sausage form, put in a boiling pot of water for an hour and a half, and you cut it and saute it on a pan. And it's a great texture. So Shannon, what do you think of this sandwich? Uh, This is incredible. I don't recall actually eating such a good sandwich uh, before. Just the flavors and the combination of the crisp and the spice and the fresh bread and everything is fantastic. I may have a new favorite meal in Halifax. (laughs) Yay! So um, what else can we find here at the Wild Lake? Our menu changes monthly. You can also find our daily quiches, which are made with the Acadiana organic tofu, which is local, breakfast burritos. We do breakfast and lunch here. That's great. Yes, um, vegan breakfast, I think, is something that you can't find too many places in town. We do full vegan, so it's kind of cool that we offer breakfast sandwiches, like the breakfast muffins, pancakes. We do coconut bacon also, so that's pretty cool. I think people really enjoy that as well. And is it like the, the meat of the coconut fried up? So it's not the meat of the coconut so it's called coconut chips and we marinate that here and bake it and it tastes like bacon. That's amazing. I'm interested in your kind of customer demographic. Do you have a sense of how many people who come in are vegan or what? I come out and talk to the customers as often as I can but I really am not concerned with if they are vegan or if they're not vegan. I just want to serve good food you know. So for me personally you don't have to be vegan to eat vegan food. Like, you don't have to be Italian to go to an Italian restaurant. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's a very, very good point. So, Shannon, um, can you tell us a bit about what's going on this fall at the Art Gallery? Probably uh, one of the biggest things happening is the Soapy Art Award uh, exhibition. Uh, The exhibition's uh, just opened up. It will be on exhibition through early January. I just want to mention this big donation that the gallery received in June uh, of the Annie Leibovitz photograph. It's uh, it's an amazing donation. It's not only a collection of amazing large-scale and and medium-scale prints, but also a collection of over 700 vintage file prints. So you can really see, in many cases, examples of the photograph she took before she ended up with the one that we all recognize, and those are really exciting. Looking at the larger prints, it's amazing to see how the quality of a print makes such a big difference, and the difference between printing in a magazine versus on something that is two feet wide. Uh, is pretty substantial. It's incredible and we do have an exhibition in the works Uh, so we're talking close to a hundred photographs for that first exhibition but when you consider we have over 2,000 photographs as part of this gifts uh, it's just a scratching the surface of what this collection is but it still requires a lot of work on our part to get everything matted and framed and and ready to go so we're hoping uh, this winter spring we'll be reopening the third floor with an exhibition devoted to the leap of its collection. Are there some photographs that you've been given that that haven't been seen by the public before? Yes, in particular the file prints. In terms of the the vintage prints, these archival prints, it's great. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff from her early days in the Rolling Stone magazine, some of the tours. Some of the very first ones you start seeing is Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead and kind of behind the scenes with him and his family and, and goofing around on the beach. It's very exciting to see that work in progress of what led to the final image and and the stories behind some of the images classic blues brothers photo but instead of in their classic hats and suits and ties but their faces painted blue instead that was something that uh, Belushi actually didn't want to do and so she only got like three shots before he's like that's it that's done 
John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Um, there's not just the gorgeous imagery. There's there's the stories that Annie Leibovitz has lived through and these connections she's made. And you start feeling this really weird connection to the people in these images. And obviously, this means this donation means a lot to the gallery. It's one of those life changing moments for the gallery. It's the only collection of its kind in the world, and so it sets us up to being not only this great center and resource, uh, but to bring people to Halifax to see this collection and for us to travel uh, some of these works uh, across Canada. Well, thanks for sharing some of the details with us. I can't wait till it opens. My, one of my focuses when I opened this place was to have some sort of type of community gallery. The art that I do have is um, from kids at NASCAD and they're really good kids so uh, I would love to like have more of a gallery space here. And the, spa the high ceilings, yeah, with the so much space on the walls. Oh, I, I think you could do good here. <laughs> that's, a gr that's a great idea. This dressing is amazing. Were you going to say something else? I was too busy eating. It's too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. Well, guys, I'm going to um, wrap up by asking you each two questions, as we do with all of our guests. And first, I'm just going to take another sip of this juice. Oh, the carrots give it such an incredible color, too. So do you have a ch cherished childhood food memory? Um, my grandfather grew up out west in Saskatchewan and moved down to the valley and always had a, a what we might call a kitchen garden, although a little more substantial than that at times. And no matter how much he tried, he, he tried lots of, of different types of vegetables, and no matter what he did, the one thing that really thrived was the corn. And there is one summer, which my sister and I both remember as the year of the corn, where we got so much of it from him that we had to eat it breakfast, lunch, and supper, just nonstop. It was, it was the most ridiculous thing. And, uh, and what about a, a local business that you like to support, Shannon? Perhaps one of my favorite ones right now is actually um, over in the Alderney Ferry Terminal is the, the King's Produce, the Noggins Farm that stocks not only local valley produce, but also Fox Hill cheese and Tideview cider, and it's, uh, it's local is kind of ideal. It's the perfect thing to stop in on the way to or from work and, and grab my, my produce for the day. Uh, and Kirsten, do you have a treasured childhood food memory you'd like to share? So my mom uh, always made cookies and she made shortbreads at Christmas that were to die for shortbread cookies. So that, I think that was like when I think about my childhood, it was definitely like the cookie making, the peanut butter cookies, the shortbread cookies, the chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, actually, that's how I started cooking as well, um, was my brother taught me to make cookies when I was like five. They're one of the most simplest forms of baking and, and making something yummy. I think that's still my favorite thing to cook of all time is cookies yeah <laughs> cookies they're just so easy and about a favorite local local business that you like to support i love going to the farmer's market i used to have a table stall at the farmer's market in hubbard's i used to really love i just loved going there i loved being there really early in the morning i loved setting up i loved talking to the other vendors i loved getting my flowers the first person that got the little flower the bouquet you know it was so beautiful and i was like yes i scored <laughs> we love the farmer's market too both of our tours in the afternoon stop at the Halifax Seaport Market. It's great that Halifax has a, has a real sort of network now of farmers markets, um, Halifax and of course Nova Scotia. So thank you both so much for being here today. It's been a real pleasure. We have uh, Shannon Parker here from the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. She's the curator of collections and Kirsten Taggart who's the owner and chef at Wild Leak Food and Juice Bar which is where we've spent our afternoon eating these delicious sandwiches. This is Claire with Local Tasting Tours. Take a tour, take a bite out of Halifax. Waiting for someone to take her home